Hi, my name is Katie Johnson, and I wanted to speak about my journey from sexual immorality, lust, and pornography. So it started whenever I was the age of six. I was sexually assaulted, and it definitely perverted many things sexually for me that I saw different. Um, I started uh, dabbling in pornography at the age of seven, and it just became an addiction from there on until I was 16 years old. Now, I am currently 16, but actually it's my 100 days sober today and 100 days ago, um, the Holy Spirit and God, whatever, they just, uh, they just delivered me from that and it has been so great ever since. And I'm not saying I don't fight temptation now, but it's definitely, I've, it's definitely gone. So there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, first of all, I can't even imagine like the trauma and what she has gone through like at six years old going through that it's just like the worst thing that you can ever do to a child i think it's very brave of her to even make a video like this there's not a lot of people out on the internet which is just like super honest about their addictions it's amazing to hear actually a, a person going through something because nowadays i feel like we're just I don't know, we put on this like fake facade of everything is great and I'm doing well right now and look at what I have and I have this much money when that all of that doesn't really matter. But basically that addiction just caused a lot of um, unworthiness in my life that I felt I felt unworthy, I felt disgusting, I was so shameful and I grew up thinking I was just such a gross person because girls don't grow up feeling like that girls never spoke about it so i was like i'm the only one like i'm such a horrible person and guys are up front with it but that's not really a flex um but obviously i can't judge because i just got delivered from it it's just it just shouldn't be a flex is what i'm trying to say but basically it just caused me dabbling into it and um around middle school and high school i started getting into things sexually with um, people online and people in person so I felt disgusting I felt so gross and I hated it but I kept doing it so when it comes to beating an addiction I think you always have to look at the root cause of said addiction a lot of us nowadays we're trying to escape our reality which I don't think is a good thing and I get it you know uh, when I watch the news sometimes I'm just like the world's a horrible place. So I do understand why a lot of people want to escape into their addictions. It could be addiction or social media addiction or even a relationship. I know I was addicted to my last relationship. But when it comes to beating an addiction, you have to look at it from this perspective. God will never be able to find you if you do not tell him your location. It's impossible. So I think nowadays we, we have to be honest and sometimes you have to look yourself in the mirror and just be honest with yourself. If you are over 500 pounds, then you know you have to start exercising. You have to start with one step, as they say. And that was a bad thing. It's like whenever you're addicted to something, you hate that it controls you. But it's like in Romans, it says like you don't do what you want to, like you do what is wrong, you do what is like you don't you don't do what is right you do what is wrong and that's basically how it was and it just started this chain of sexual perversion and i didn't know how to stop it i would always beg to god and pray to god like why hasn't my addiction like gone away you know because I, I was praying and i was like god like are you listening to me or what because it seems like you aren't but little little did i know i had the i had to find the root of it of where it stemmed from and where it came from which was my sexual assault and i had to willingly give it up god isn't going to take anything that you're not willingly going to give it up he's a gentleman he's gonna take what you give not take what you're not gonna give and so it took me a long time it took me a 100 days ago finally but i always had these highs i guess where it was temporary sober and then i would go back and I don't know why I would go, up, go back. I guess I was just bored and I just was like, this is stupid. Like, there's no point in like trying to save me. I don't know. It sets a good example when a person that is that young is just telling the truth and just like, okay, this is a problem and this is something which I've been working on because I've been feeling the exact same way uh, when it comes to 
I do not want to call it a fiction, but yeah, sometimes I do watch and I just feel like, I don't know, it's nothing that is good for my soul. And it's something that I've been working on as well, trying to just get rid of a lot of addictions. Uh, I was also addicted to alcohol a while. I used to drink a lot. And that is the thing with addictions. They put you in such a dark place. And the other day I was like, cause I was, I don't know, the other night I was drinking, I was drinking some wine and I just felt like, why? Why do I drink this? Why do I put poison in my body? Myself, cause I mean, I felt like there wasn't, I didn't know who my identity was in Christ. And even when I did know who I was in Christ and I felt the Holy Spirit, I still was like dabbling in it. I was still dabbling in porn. I was still dabbling in sexual immorality. But the thing is, is I just didn't know who my identity was in Christ. And I didn't know how I should treasure my body so much and how my body is in a temple. And what made it more conflicting is that whenever I would have talking stages or just, you know, mess with guys online or anything like that, I wouldn't feel loved if I wasn't lusted over. So I would. It's great that she said that. I think women are the most beautiful creatures in the world. And I just don't think that they should lead with lust. I've heard so many scary stories of women traveling to other countries and then getting AIDS. You know, they go on a girl's trip and then she gets AIDS. And I'm just like, instead of you going through that whole phase, you could have just kept your chastity, found yourself the right guy and just be there. I just didn't feel cared for if I wasn't lusted over. But then if I was lusted over, then I didn't feel loved. So it was this constant battle between I'm loved. No, you're not loved. No, loved. No, it was just I didn't know who I was and I felt horrible about it because it was it was definitely a secret sin for a while and then it got bigger and bigger because I kept it in the dark and whenever I brought it to light it was this flex I was trying to flex it it was like a like oh yeah like I watch porn and I do stuff with you know what I'm saying like no <laughs> like I can't believe I ugh, can't believe I did that but the thing is is like Satan wants to keep me in my past so every time I have those flashbacks or anything like that, I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I've always had one universal law and that is anything that comes easy cannot be good for you. Have you guys ever wondered why alcohol and vehicles both exists? Think of it. I mean, if it's illegal to drunk drive, why do they even allow you to do it? It's all about temptation and that is what all of this is about, temptation. To tempt you to do things, right? And if you're a weak-minded person, you're gonna fall to the world's temptations. Because that thing or those thoughts or what I did in the past doesn't have authority over me. I have authority over it given by the power of Jesus. So please know that, that you will never be overcome by temptation. You can fight it by the Holy Spirit. Your flesh does not want you to fight it, fight it and wants you to give in. And it's like, and I would have the thoughts like, oh, well, I'm like, I already started it. So why would I finish? Like, or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, I already started it. So like, what's the point in stopping? There's no point. Like, that's exactly how I think. And it's obviously not a good thought process, but it's just how my addiction went. And it just caused tons of barriers in relationships and just these situationships. <laughs> Like it was dangerous, it was bad, and I didn't see myself as worthy, and I didn't know who I was in Christ. And I just wanted to say that you can be delivered from it. Like God will allow those things to come to you so you can continue to fight it and you can grow through the challenge. Like he's preparing you for something bigger, so you gotta pass that test too. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave you with this. Two years ago, I was in a very dark place. I remember I was in my huge apartment and I went down on my knees one night and I prayed to God and I begged God to deliver me out of this darkness. I said to God, I made him a promise, whatever you put me through, I'll do it, God. Doesn't matter, I'm ready. Just give me more. Give me the life that I really want. And God said, okay, 
I'm gonna test you. If I'm being honest, the next day, just like clockwork, I started losing friends. I started, I lost my job, I lost, I lost everything. Just like clockwork. And I thought to myself, why? Why, why are you doing this to me, God? Some of the people I was willing to do, I could have died for these people, but those people weren't willing to do the same for me. And it taught me only one thing in life, that all of this is a test. And if you really, really want God to show you the path, go down on your knees and pray for it. And he will show you the path. He will. And it's not going to be an easy path because what God did is he put me out in the forest and said, survive. I know you're strong enough. Survive. He took away everything and I had to rebuild it. And that is today's lesson.